The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the April 7th. Terrific Tuesday edition, hour two edition of the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and hope that each of you are off to a great start of your day. Let's make sure that you and I, that we do everything we can to have an extraordinary Tuesday. Of course, let's always remember what's what's talked about as a dream. What's, what's envisioned is exciting. Of course, what's planned becomes possible, but what's scheduled is real. And I really want to thank you for scheduling your time with me. I am honored by your presence, grateful for your presence. I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, you can reach out to me at 877-927-6648. Internationally, well, you could try calling that 800 number. It probably won't work. Internationally, I think what you want to dial is 727-445-1044. I know that number will work. Remember, if you've got a question, somebody else has got that exact same question. So what better way than a random act of kindness? Go ahead and call in for someone else, folks. It is Terrific Tuesday. Of course, it's Tiger Financial Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow up 33 points. She's trading at 17,915. S&P is up two at 2,082. Composite up 12 points at 49.29. Russell 2000 back just slightly down 52 cents. Russell 2000 has been the one that has been doing all the work out here so it's taken a day of rest dax up 144 points FTSE up 114 uh, gold is back six bucks right now silver down 27 cents uh, light sweet crude has just uh, turned positive up one penny out there um if i take a look at currency pairs the euro japanese yen just really trading flat so no conviction behind that move we did have conviction inside the markets yesterday we got the summation index for the composite and the adow to join along with the uh, new york stock exchange they are above the a zero line the summation index and both those has turned up that is typically where a trend change takes place doesn't have to this is day one above the uh, zero line we'll see and it's really important for it to stay above that zero line at the end of today's trading session if it does that says that the uh, change in trend that steve was anticipating and actually at this stage here looks like it came in on march the 26th out there is in until the uh, end of this month the early part of may out there we'll see how that uh, works but Today so far, you know, a lot of work yesterday, 370-point move in the Dow to keep put things in perspective. Do not pay attention to the 100-point move. Instead, pay attention to all the work that had to be done to come off of that uh, bottom out there. Gargantuan work. That's some heavy lifting that the Dow, in fact, had to uh, do out there. If we take a quick peek at the VIX index, trading below the 50-day exponential moving average, never a good thing for the bears out there. The bears want to see that VIX index above 1540. That is is your 50-day exponential moving average. Now, let's go take a look at what's going on inside the ETF structure. Let's go pick them apart. Let's take a look at the QQQ ETF. Let's start off here. What do we know about the Qs? As I mentioned to you yesterday, one of the things that you wanted to see inside the Qs was a close above uh, March 26th. That high was 105.70. That had volume of 47 million shares. What did you do yesterday? That's right. 24 million shares, a rejection of that swing point on price and volume. You can't bust them down. What do you do? You go ahead and you try and bust them up to the upside. In this case here, the Qs are going to go ahead and make a run to that March 20th level. Only 31 million shares out there. Uh, that high is uh, 109.07. The low is 108.51. So long as the Qs stay above 105.70, it's off to the races. If we go take a look at what's going on inside the equal weight versus the uh, weighted ETF inside the Qs, uh, we can see here we know that that had a divergent bottom. We see that the equal weight was making a a higher low while the QQQ was making a lower low. Never a good scene for the bears out there because it is the equal weight. It is strength in numbers, and that's really what the equal weighted ETF is showing us out here. That's the one where you see a directional divergence. That uh, means that the market resolves itself in the direction of what the equal weighted ETF is doing. So all signs are looking good there as we speak. Let's go back over. Let's go take a look at the IWM. 
them. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, that's back 11 cents on 2.8 million shares. The Russell 2000, well, it has done its work when testing out its uh, March uh, 26 swing point. Now, it tested that swing point out on um, March 27. It did that with 23 million shares, going against 27 million shares. That was a, a failure on price and volume. The IWM has an A to B equals CD to the upside. It's confirmed. That says price wants to make its move to 129 to 131 out there. Uh, the IWM is the strongest of them. So for it to have a little bit of a weak day out here, no big deal. Uh, we also know that uh, on the monthly basis inside the IWM, that it wants to get to the 1350 level to minimum. Let's go take a look at its equal weighted counterpart out here. Let's go take a look at the EWRS. What's its message? Well, if we take a look at its message, the Guggenheim Russell 2000, strong like bull, very strong like bull. What do I mean by that? Well, it's up above its recent swing point high, which was March 23rd, where the IWM is trying to get back to March 23rd. So we take a look at the equal weighted structure of those 2000 equities with inside of the Russell 2000. The equal weight is doing its uh, job. It's doing its work. It's saying that it has higher price in its future out here. And the Russell 2000 will eventually make its way above that uh, March 23rd swing point because it already has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Let's go take a look at what's going on inside of the SPY out here. You got the SPY up 30 cents, 31 cents as we speak, 15 million shares. What did she do yesterday? Oh, up with 114 million shares. Rejecting what? Yes. March 26. That had 153 million shares. You can't bust them down. You try to go bust them up. Well, inside the SPY, that says price wants to run to March 23rd. Somewhere between 2.10 to 2.11.11 out there. Let's go check in on its equal weight. And that's the second day in a row of testing that March 26 swing point with light volume out there. So that is a rejection of a swing point with volume and a price out here. If we go take a look at the equal weighted structure out here, let's go take a look at the RSP. The RSP is also the Guggenheim. S&P 500 equal weighted ETF as the bottom was being formed in it a much higher low out here in the case of the SPY an equal low for the most part again directionally speaking it is the equal weight that is going to uh, paint the weight when we see a divergence and in fact right here what you can see is that the swing point the close I should say but March 30th close we see price right now is above that level inside the equal weight that bodes well for the S&P 500 500. You've got the majority of stocks doing the heavy lifting, not the ones that are weighted that are putting some pressure, price pressure inside of the markets. Let's go finish this puppy off. Let's go take a look at the uh, Dow, the diamonds out here, the DIA. What is it doing? Well, 54 cents to the upside. Of course, we know it's price oscillator up above zero. Once you get above zero, being short is not the message. If we take a look at the Dow diamonds, what did it do yesterday? Well, March 26 had volume up 6.6 million shares and yesterday 6.3 million shares so we've got rejections on three swing points yesterday march 26 all with light volume failure on price and volume can't bust them down what will it do try to bust them to the upside inside of the dow diamonds that says it wants to run to that march 23rd level only three and a half million shares out there should be able to take that out and then go ahead and test and move to the march 2nd high and that's at 182.68 181.37 to 182.68 so long as the summation index stays positive so long as the price oscillator is above the uh, zero line in all three of these, the New York Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ Composite, the uh, Dow Industrials. It says motor on, folks, motor on into May 4th out there. Then we see a bit of a pullback. Then we might uh, take a look at uh, getting on the uh, short train for a period of time before we buy the next bottom going into the uh, summertime out there. If we go take a look at uh, Goldilocks, let's go see what uh, gold is doing out here. Back $5.40 uh, gold. Uh, you know, we've got that initiation move that likely took place on uh, Thursday. That began because the uh, full moon came in on Saturday. So was it yesterday's open? Was it uh, Thursday's close? I'm going with Thursday's close at this stage here. Uh, and we know that the uh, Dow, that the, that the uh, gold uh, had moved above the swing point for March 
26 yesterday. It did it with volume. Says it at least wants to get back and test 12, 20, 40. You know, if it can't close above that level, it pulls back. It tests 1208. Maybe it pulls back a bit lower. But it does look like Goldilocks on its way at a minimum to 1256. And I would say into the 1300 range is more likely the price target for Goldie. Excuse me, for Goldilocks. So if we take a look at uh, silver, silver back a quarter as we speak right now. Uh, silver here was unable to test that uh, swing point from March 26, but it will. It'll get up and over it, and it'll make a run into the $18.58 change area. That's what's going on with it. Light sweet crude, big day yesterday. Adding to it today, it's got an A to B equals CD. Not confirmed, but it could confirm. Uh, you've got uh, the March 26 swing point. It sounds like March 26 is all over the place out here. Well, it is. That high is 52.48. You close above 52.48. Light sweet crude is on its way to 5550 out there. What else do we want to look at? Uh, the currency pairs, Euro Japanese yen, not doing a whole lot, but it's not doing anything to the downside, so there's really no damage, no danger out here as we speak right now. The euro is what's put in a lot of strength inside the US dollar index while it pulls back. But you know, that looks more likely to me to be an A to B equals C D to the upside with the Euro eventually moving into the 113 area out here. If we go take a look at uh, the Japanese yen versus the U.S. dollar. Well, we're out of time, but we can do that when we get back from this break. Dow's up 62. S&P is up four and a half. Composite is up 18. It's a beautiful thing. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. 
You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We We take take it it every every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 69 right now. Trade at 17,949. S&P is up six. Composites up 23. Russell is now uh, green up uh, one uh, point out here. Mentioned the uh, Japanese yen as we were going into that last break. Let's go take a look at it. It's got an A to B equals CD to the upside. Looks like that is the uh, pattern that is in play out here after forming a uh, C point back on uh, March 26. How about that? Uh, it's amazing that that date just simply comes up all over the board. Now, what the uh, uh, in order for the yen to actually confirm that, it's got to get above 122.02. So it's got its work cut out for itself. Right now, trading at 120.19. But it does look like, to me, if we take a look at retracements here, coming off of, from the A point from the bottom of uh, January 16th to the uh, top that was put in, uh, most recent top on uh, March the 10th, you can see it's made a 0.618 retracement level. Oftentimes, a 0.618 area can act as a nice uh, a nice area for a C point to uh, form uh, inside the A to B equals CD complex out there. So that's what it appears to uh, be the pattern that's in play inside of the uh, Japanese uh, yen. Now let's go take a look at um, let's go take a look at some of the ETF structures with inside the S&P 500 out here. Let's start off by looking at the XLK, the technology sector. Now technology sector out here yesterday, uh, it also uh, rejected a, a swing point. Let's go see that swing was from March 26, that had 9 million shares, and yesterday, 7 million shares. So you got a rejection of the number one weighting uh, 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 sector with inside the S&P 500. You can't bust them down. What are you going to do? You're going to go try to bust them up. Well, in this case here, takes you into these uh, doji candles back here from uh, March 20th and 23rd out here. Uh, that is where it looks like the XLK wants to take it to. So it's between 42.45 and probably uh, the 42.75 cent mark out here. Now, I just mentioned mentioned the 0.618 retracement, did I not? And taking a look at the Japanese yen, does it really matter what uh, kind of uh, chart we're looking at, whether it's currency, whether it's an ETF, whether it's a stock? No, it does not. If we go from the low to the high out here, what kind of retracement did the XLK, XLK form? Yes, it formed an exact 0.618 retracement. Well, exact, I don't know. Uh, 4093 would have been the exact. What the XLK got to was 4094. Shame on it. Uno, one cent out there. How about that? Now, that is very likely where the A to B equals CD pattern has formed inside of the XLK. If, in fact, that is the case, if Steve-O is correct, that the market has formed its next low coming into the uh, coming into the um, May time frame out here, we very easily could see the XLK go ahead and not just make its way to 4346, but make its way up to the 4501 level. And that's what's going on inside of that ETF structure, I think. I think Apple is still the number one waiting inside of the XLK. So let's go over and take a look at uh, Apple and see what it is uh, doing out here. It is flat today, off a of nickel, 11 million shares out here. I believe I heard that the uh, iWatch is uh, coming out this week, maybe on uh, Friday. Saw a few commercials out there. But let's take a look at the uh, A to B equals CD pattern that uh, may be underway out here. And that's this one. Uh, and that's the one that comes off of the uh, low from January 6th. Uh, to the high out here on February 24th. Now, if we take a look at that retracement, we're going to see not even a 0.61. Well, 
Steve-O, you got to do grab the right thing out there. I did not do that. Let me try that again. Uh, if we take a look at its retracement, only a 0 0.382 retracement. So what is its message? You know, its message is, regardless of what you think of the iWatch out here, if, in fact, Apple, or it could be Gapple, because maybe it's going to go ahead and gap up into it, and that's a swing point from February 24th. That's $133.60. 69 million shares out there. If Apple can move above that, that's going to give you a price projection of 150 60 158.48. That's how the economy XLK will go ahead and make that uh, pattern out there, but Apple, uh, you know, is the stronger of the of the two. Maybe you want to take a look at the QQQ and its weighting structure uh, inside of uh, that to the upside. Uh, but so far, so good. Now, what Apple's got to deal with here, it's got to deal with its uh, TAS market profile somewhere between the uh, 128.58. I'll go ahead and say maybe about the 129.46 as well. You close above that, and that sets off uh, what the message is that the market's going to respond favorably to the iWatch. Maybe you're going to, I don't know, you're going to see crowds out the uh, door out there. You know, it's a possibility. It is a uh, possibility. Let's get back to the ETF structures, though. Let's go take a look at the healthcare sector, the XLV. As we take a look at the XLV, it's trading at 72.68. What did it do yesterday, if anything, with regard to uh, swing points? Well, uh, come on, Steve. Oh, don't do that. Don't pull it off the uh, tracks here. I'm just trying to make it a little bit larger for us to take a look at. So uh, March 26, where is that at? March 26. Mm. The swing point is actually from April Fool's Day, April 1st, where price ran right into support of that TAS market profile. It actually was testing a swing point from back here on March 10th. So let's look at March 10th when we get back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be right back, folks. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over $7. 75% off. 
John Logan hosted a special subscriber only webinar in December and you'll gain access to that archive as well so you can learn exactly what the tabs profile scanner can do for you try this product out no matter what you trade the tabs profile scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions there's no obligation to pay anything don't let this offer pass you by get your 30-day free trial to the tabs profile scanner today by signing up at tfnn.com no matter where you listen to tfnn programming we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through tfnn.com tfnn airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m till 6 p.m eastern and you can view each program by accessing tiger tv through our homepage. we even have an easy link for all mobile devices including iphones and ipads located at the top right hand corner of the tfnn homepage. you can use your smartphone to view tiger tv but if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video then you can simply visit tfnn.mobi in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs the mission of tfnn is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up about 88, 89 points right now, 17,968. How about the uh, last uh, two days? Uh, that means the uh, Dow is up nearly 500 points over the course of the last two days. Don't uh, don't be taking a look at yesterday's 100-point gain and today's 87-point gain. Only taking a look at that. You've got to take a look at that uh, at that uh, head fake uh, sell-off of the uh, jobs data on uh, Friday. Absolutely no support uh, uh, from uh, the uh, members being the uh, European Union in the the uh, Japanese yen out there, the Euro Japanese yen, it said not a chance. And that's the same message that it had, even when it had a weekend to think about it. And when it reported for work, when it reported for uh, duty uh, Sunday evening uh, through yesterday morning, that was really the uh, same message. So you saw a big, huge uh, move. Uh, just if you take a look at the uh, Dow out there, we're now somewhere near the, uh, um, well, maybe not. Uh, no, I take that back. We're probably, if I go from high to low, I would, not 500 points, more like the 400-point uh, range out there. Nonetheless, still a, a big uh, move inside the marketplace. I mentioned the XLV. We were taking a look at the XLV, and its swing point, actually, is not March 26 out here. The swing point that it was dealing with uh, was the uh, swing point from March 10th. Now, I, I, uh, if we take a look at the top of that swing, it's 71.54, and the volume on that swing was 12.3 million shares. Now, price came careaming down into that, 21 million shares. If ever there was a, a sign that that swing point should have been taken out. Now, the bottom was never tested. Um, we did see a rejection of uh, price. It should have been that. We saw another test, though, the very following day on April 2nd, 7.5 million shares, 5.7 on April 6th. That swing point was saying not a chance, not a chance and all holy heck out there that it was going to be taken out. You've seen a rejection of that swing point now with light volume for two trading sessions in a row out here. Uh, that says that the XLV is ready to motor on up and uh, the XLV has a confirmed A to B equals CD. That ought to take it into the 7954 range out there. Uh, the, con the confirmation of that, I suppose, will be getting above its most recent swing from March 20th. That high is 7601, the low is 7448. If we go take a look at. Um, uh, let's go take a look at the energy sector, the XLE. Let's go see what it is doing out here. Now, the energy sector, uh, this, had formed, this had tested a swing point much earlier. The swing point that it was dealing with was back on January 14th, which had 52 million shares. The test came in on March 13th with 21 million shares. Couldn't bust them down. What you trying to do? Well, it's trying to bust them up and form an A to B equals CD to the upside. Right now, if you take a look at the energy sector, the XLE, which used to be, 
the weak sector out here from the February 17th high down to the low where it tested that desk swing point that was on March the 13th. Price is now up above the 0.618 retracement level. You came into it yesterday with a widish type ranging bar out here. You're up above that level. Says 80.59 is in the cards and then price moves up into the February 17th area somewhere between 82.43 and 81.17. That is what the energy sector wants to do, the XLE. Let's go finish this off and take a look at the XLP. Consumer staples out here. When we take a look at consumer staples, uh, consumer staples, you know, uh, uh, yesterday, did it test it? No, it did not test it. Consumer staples are headed to the March 2nd level. Only 5.5 million shares out there. Yesterday, moving on up with 5.6 million shares. Didn't get to the swing point, but you're moving higher in this case here with some uh, volume. Looks like that's what the XLP wants to uh, do out there. Let's take a look at, what should we look at? So Apple's flat, uh, ExxonMobil. Let's go look at ExxonMobil out here. XOM, uh, up 50 cents as we speak. Volume behind the move, about the 3 million shares. So let's go take a look at it. Really just been, you know, imagine this. Take a look at this. Somebody clean up this uh, chart out here. Um, let's look at ExxonMobil. Oh, can I delete that? I know I can delete it. I just got the right key. There we go. So the XLE. Uh, ExxonMobil is the heaviest weight, and you got ExxonMobil, Chevron, Schlumberger. They represent like, I don't know, 40 plus percent, maybe 45 percent of the energy sector. Just picture the uh, just picture ExxonMobil here. It hasn't really done much. You know, when you take a look at it, uh, in fact, it's really kind of it's just been consolidating here. It's been trading within its a TAS market profile. Uh, it's been TAS market profiles out here from anywhere between 83.58 to 80. What is it, 85.83 out here? If Exxon Mobil can get some energy, boy, that XLE will really take off to the upside out here. So you want to be watching for that 85.83 level, I would say, inside of Exxon Mobil. It does have a swing point back here. Uh, uh, from March the uh, 13th, that had volume of 16 million shares. Um, you know, instead of really that swing point, by the way, yesterday was tested with uh, 10 million shares versus 16. Um, but I would really just pay attention to this box. Any close above 85, 83, Exxon Mobil probably runs up to uh, the uh, top of uh, its uh, swing point from February 13, somewhere between 93.45 and 92.28. So that may be the trade out there on any close above 85, 83 inside of Exxon. Mobile. Uh, let's see. Let's go take a look at some things here moving in the uh, marketplace. So you got Regenerin, uh, Biogen, the IBB. Let's go take a look at the IBB. It's up uh, 2%, up $7. Let's go see what it wants to uh, do out here, what kind of message. We took a look at Biogen in the uh, first hour of the show. That's got a high volume high that it wants to uh, test out here. We take a look at the IBB specifically. Uh, this is what put some pressure inside of the uh, NASDAQ uh, composite. It formed a, a swing point out here on uh, March 26. Volume there, 5.2 million shares. That was tested with 3.9 million shares on the worst of days out here. Not enough to... Uh, Bust them down, didn't test the low. Right now, all that uh, IBB needs to actually do is close above the high of 345.13. Now, again, volume there was 5.2 million shares. You've done 1.2 million shares today. Uh, this, has, this is a winner either way. If the IBB closes above 345.13 today, does it with lighter volume, you'll have a rejection of a March 26 swing point with lighter volume. So price and volume. If this moves higher, Yesterday was a lower low. If this moves higher with volume today, you're going to have a move higher off the bottom with volume. And so long as it closed above 345.13, winner is what it says. Now, it's got some resistance. Yeah, it's got some downdrafts out here. But let's let's take a look. You can use downdrafts as one. We can take a look at retracements. Let's look at retracements here from February 4th to the high out here on uh, March the uh, 20th. It's just really done a, a 0.618 retracement level, just really setting up the next A to B of a CD to the uh, upside is what it looks like uh, to me uh, that it is actually doing out there. That is the IBB. Let's go take a look at Regenerant Pharmaceuticals. That's the uh, big leader to the upside dollar-wise. That's up 11 bucks, up 2.5%. Let's go see what it is doing here. Uh, the fact that uh, Regenerant Pharmaceuticals should have been able to take a form an A to B equals CD to the downside there. It's B point was... March 26. That B point was taken out with, let's see, it had volume of uh, 1.1 million shares. No, it was not taken out with volume. I take that back. Let me see. Low, 40, 441.87. Close. 
close 441.18. How about that? It was not a confirmed A to B equals CD. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. Probably did that intercession intraday out here. So all that uh, Regeneron has done is come back to a breakout, two breakouts uh, to be specific. It had one breakout uh, from mm, February 19th. About 1.5 million shares to the upside. Another breakout with 1.6 million shares right here. So all that the Regenerate Pharmaceuticals did was just come back to its uh, breakout area, and it did it with lighter volume. Can't bust them down. Uh, right now you're trading into the March 31st swing point, only 885,000 shares. You've done 200,000 shares in an hour and 12 minutes of uh, trading so uh, about uh, yeah you're, you're moving into that swing point with volume no idea whether we'll keep up or not but you're moving into that swing point as long as it closes inside uh, 4502 it says you should go test <coughs> excuse me 464.52 out there that's what's going on inside of regenerin pharmaceuticals hey, let's switch to the other side let's go take a look at ocular uh, therapeutics. What are they doing out here? Um, <coughs> oh, so ocular therapeutics was uh, cure cuts the deal. Was he? Uh, hmm, I don't know. Let's go take a look at what it's doing. Anyways, this thing had gap lower this morning. It's got big volume behind the uh, move out here. Looks like one of the largest volume days since its IPO back here on July 25th out there. That doesn't look good. Uh, some folks really have taken a haircut. Went from forty three dollars, forty four nineteen. Uh, right now, trading out at 32.05 as we speak right now, and it's got volume, and it's got really nothing to support it. Um, you know, so there's no swing point, anything we can go take a look at where it would move down and uh, support it. That is Ocular Therapeutics. Let's move back to the upside out here. Let's go to Shire PLC HS. SHPG is a Turkish symbol, up four percent, up nine dollars, and uh, change out here. A little bit. Uh, a little bit. Um, a little bit of a problem for this equity. I don't know what was behind that gap down on October 15th, but there's major volume down uh, there at that bottom. Hey, let's go out to Fort Collins, Colorado, to uh, Mark. Mark, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Good. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for, for asking. You want to take a look at that health care sector inside the S&P 500? Tell me how I can assist you, how I can help you. Well, you were talking earlier, um, and I don't know if you missed something or if I'm missing something. But it looks to me like it's got an ABC down, and you didn't um, seem to think so. It's, it had a high on the 20th of March. Absolutely. Uh, made a run down to the 26th on 18.2 million shares, got a low of 71.92. It broke that with 21 million shares on the 1st of April with uh, and closed below that swing point. So... I don't know. You didn't catch that or what, but I don't know. I, I did. I did catch that. And so 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 thanks for calling in and asking about it. We really have two competing kind of uh, swings out here. Let's see. You got 71 even, Stephen, 7096. So if you look at March 10th and March 11th out here, that's also the swings that it was pushing down into. Right. Okay. Because. That, so, so it was pushing down loss. there, and okay. what I'm saying is that that was rejected both yesterday and on March 2nd. So okay. the answer, so, so I did have an A to B equals CD originally drawn in there, and then we can see that it's priced back above that March 26th level out there. So okay. I, I really just kind of logically went and said, well, what else is it doing? So it seemed like the what else that it was doing was really coming all the way back here to March uh, 10th. So we really okay. have two competing type patterns. You're, you're absolutely right. And if it was able to stay below that low from March 26, then I would say, yeah, you've got a, an absolute A to B equals CD to the downside because of that April 1st level. Uh, the other thing that I was looking at and the reason why I went back to those prior swings was because of this uh, TAS market profile that held out here. And that was that support line at 71.74. So when that high was generated on March 20th, there was a market profile that formed Mark on uh, March 24th. And if you take a look at that, the light blue line on my screen out here, see how it's closer to the red line? Yeah. 
That's your point of control. And when it's set up that way, it actually says that the sellers have control, which they clearly did. But the sellers seem to have lost control right at that level of support out there. So I, I say you've got two competing patterns, and because price is now back above the B point, um, it looks to me like the, uh, the buyers are now back in control. It's got to get above. It's got to close above 7506. And the cool thing about that is if, in fact, price moves higher, um, we'll know uh, how pr when price is coming into the uh, 7448 level. And if it's doing it with more than 9.5 million shares, then that says, hey, it's ready to continue to move upside. So th I was, you know, I was definitely multitasking. And thank you for calling because I don't know that I clearly articulated it. But those are the multiple things that I was looking at and trying to do an analysis of the XLV. Yeah, what your thoughts? I was just trying to think. The other thing I was looking at too is you could also draw a downtrend line from the very top. Um, Perhaps. Yes. And then bring that down and then see if it actually can break above that on this current move. That's kind of what I'm watching for right now. Yeah, so so let's let's do that. Now, what I've done here is we'll take a look at both a trend line and the uh, channel line. So if we use if we use Bud Rolf's channel work out here, the cool thing is is that in essence we have uh, three touch points. You're very close to three touch points out here. So that's using the body of the candle from March 20th. That's using the uh, the body of the candle from March 30th and the body of the candle from March 31st. So right now, with regard to channel lines, we're actually like seeing that. a break of that uh, channel. So you've got really two areas, two lines of demarcation, right? The one that you had mentioned, which now is the red uh, uh, descending trend line on my uh, chart. And so that would be your area. So I would say you're right now seeing a break of the channel line. Uh, yeah, you can absolutely say that if you break the uh, trend line too, then that just confirms uh, that, you know, you're going to see at least probably move to that point of control level, 74.59. But you're absolutely right. You've got a down trend that is in place inside of the XLV. I okay. just think we I think we just got a couple of competing patterns out there and some some information that we should use that's valuable to us. Yeah. And then there's a couple other um, ETFs that I wouldn't mind you looking at because they seem to be pretty important in the market is the XLF sure. and IYT and those seem to be pretty weak. So, so why yeah. you let me know what you think about those. Let's take a look at XLF. And you're right, it, it, it is a pretty important uh, ETF for the market. But, of course, off the March 2009 low, it hasn't really slowed the market down, so to speak. But let's look at it as we speak today. Now, in the case of the XLF, my focus would first shift to the March 10th swing point. And that had 40 million shares. And that was tested with 32 million shares. So we've seen a rejection of that swing point with light volume. Can you stay through this break? Sure. Okay, so we'll go back to uh, Mark and Fort Collins. We'll look at that all-important XLF, the financial sector for the S&P 500. Be right back, folks. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. 
With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 84. S&P is up uh, 7. We're on the line with uh, Mark from Fort Collins, Colorado, out there. Now, you know, Mark, it's been a, it's been a tough trading market out here, considering where the S&P uh, uh, closed on uh, December 31st, where it's trading right now. So um, I, I think you trade uh, intraday as well. Do you not? Um, yeah, once in a while. It just depends. Sometimes I go you know, two, three, four days, and sometimes it's yeah. Yeah, so that, that 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 works. You know, back to the XLF uh, because you know you got a market that's basically moving. You know that that hasn't broken out to the upside or to the downside. There's been lots of great uh, swings. I would say, you know, go look at the two-hour charts or or five-hour charts. They're the ones that are giving some of these uh, great uh, swings out here. But with regard to the XLF, uh, you know, my eyes focus in on that trading session from March 10th that had 40 million shares and it was tested with light volume on March 26th. And once it closed. And, and then if we want to even use March 26 as a guideline, because that's a key swing point, in my opinion, in the markets, when we take a look at the actual uh, sector, uh, the, uh, the index ETFs out there, that had volume of 32 million shares, and that was tested with 26, 21, and yesterday 15 million shares. So we've got really two swing points inside the XLF that were tested on light volume. It's certainly not the type of volume to bust out the lows. So now it says, hey, is it going to go try to bust out the highs? You know, it should at least get back into the, uh, I'd have to say the 2478-ish uh, type area out there in inside the XLF. But what are you looking at that I that I and, and it could easily be an A to B equal CD to the upside if it takes that out. But what what are you looking at um, that, uh, I've over, that I've overlooked? It, it really doesn't have quite the strength of everything else, just as a general indicator of how market strength and it's even just trying to get back over that little pot from the 30th and with 35 million shares, it's struggling like yesterday. It did 15 million. Um, now it's set to do maybe oh, six, 15 or 16 today, and it can't quite even get over that last pot from the 30th. So I'm just trying to kind of gauge that. And then the other thing that seems to be an indicator for a lot of people that talk about the market is the transports, the IYT. And that looked like it had a confirmed ABC down. 
Um, so I don't, after we're done with this, if you have time, let's look at that. Yeah, well, actually, we'll just we'll punch that up on the, the screen. Now, it completed um, an A to B equals CD to the uh, down, at least one. Um, you know, um, you know if we if technically it, it did. But the one that you're actually looking at is the larger one, I believe. And that's the one with regard to the, uh, you're looking at the March 20th swing point as your A or B down here on March 26th and a uh, very shallow retracement. 32%, 30.318 retracement into the high on March 30th out there. So is that, this, is that the A to B equals CD that you're looking at? Yes. Okay. So uh, now let's try to figure out what are the uh, transports uh, doing out here. You know, they've, they've certainly they found a bid today with the uh, FedEx news out there. Um, you know, the if I just simply take a look at and, and you're right, they have a uh, they have that so-called confirmed A to B equals CD because the B point of 154 had volume of 374,000 shares and it was taken out with 779 yesterday, 452 the day before. Just kind of like the XLV, I like to see A to B equals CD patterns be a little bit cleaner and have conviction. And once you break a B point, and especially when you do it with volume, it ought to have additional follow through. So today, the mere fact that the IYT is trading above 154.35 has to make you pause for a second. So you really won't know if that pattern has uh, completed until you see how it how it deals with March 30th out there. Um, you know, it's, as long as it trades above 154.35, that's how that's how I would how I would view it. But it sounds to me like you're looking more towards the short side of the market or looking for other confirmations. You know, I'll just simply go back to the summation index out here. The composite is above the uh, zero line. The Dow is above it. The New York Stock Exchange has been above it for days out here. Uh, these markets want to run higher. All righty. Thanks a lot. Hey, folks, uh, stay tuned. Basil Chapman is up next. Have a great Tuesday. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Take care, folks. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.